Hello, can you hear me? Do you hear me speaking through this microphone? Test, test, test. Testing.
Okay, then. Good evening, all. Welcome to the Tuesday, March 14, 2023, business meeting of the Hampton Bays Board of Education. Um, I need a motion to call the meeting to order, please. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I think we're all pretty much aware of where <laughs> the emergency exits are. Okay. Well, I think we will move on to the clerk's report, correct? No, I'm sorry. I need a approval of the order of agenda first. I need a motion. Motion. I need a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Now we will go to the clerk. Be resolved that the Board of Education accepts the minutes of its business meeting held February 7, 2023. I need a motion, please. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Public comments, speakers will be recognized to wish to address the board on agenda items only. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, we have moved our students of the month to next month, so that will put us right to Mr. Clemenson. Good evening. Uh, after remarks tonight, we have a public hearing that was uh, noticed in the paper on Thursday, March 9th, in uh, the Southampton Press, which is our paper of record. Uh, that public hearing is going to be on uh, in changing the income eligibility provisions, for income eligibility limits for two provisions in the tax, Southampton Town Tax Code that would influence school taxes for certain individuals. So I'll get to that in a moment in, our, in the presentation. I start always with, um, our enrollment, but before I do that, we have an empty in-person house tonight, but we look forward to recognizing our three students of the month next month, uh, so we'll double up there. And then also um, a congratulations and a celebration for our class of 2023 representatives, our salutatorian Sophia Solano Cruz, uh, who, um, and our valedictorian uh, Liam Sutton. So uh, I'm, I'll save the um, celebration for what Mr. Richard will do, but I will say that uh, the amount of college credits that these kids are leaving Hampton Bays with might be a record, and is buying each, they're buying themselves so much time to explore and do amazing things in college uh, with what they've done here. So looking forward to celebrating them, and for those watching at home, it's a click to our website to read the stories about them as well because uh, Syntax did a great job highlighting Sophia and Liam. So we look forward to celebrating them as well. Enrollment wise, we are um, at 2008 students, kindergarten through 12, 2037 with our three life skills academies uh, in elementary, middle and high school. So we're right where we basically where we were in February, just a little change. You can see that we're 22 students higher than we were on, when we opened the door in September, still less than we were in, Janu in June when we graduated the class of 2022. So I, I always want to say that to say, well, we might be a, a nudge higher than um, what was anticipated in our projections, we're still trending in that slowly soft landing in terms of enrollment coming down slightly and slowly because of the graduating classes being larger than the incoming kindergarten classes. It's a trend that we'll, that we'll continue to see all, over the next several years. Um, we know birth rates, what they translate into for kindergartners five years later. After that, the crystal ball is hazier. That's why we look at this every single year. A few general updates, uh, a couple of minutes late tonight. Uh, the town board has been seated and working since one o'clock today and we had as a district three opportunities to comment and participate in public hearings related to um, decisions the town board will make on Hampton Bays, uh, related to Hampton Bays. The first two are the installation of stop signs in our, in our walk zone. So these have been concerns of parents, uh, they've been concerns 
Um, certainly I know of our King Street neighbors. Um, so the town board heard today um, the recommendation to place a stop sign at Wakeman Road and Gardenia Avenue. So think between Lincliff, the next stop sign is Bay Avenue when you head south. It's curved, that's curving down by Fordham and Yale, Tulip, Gardenia, and you pick up, people pick up speed there. Uh, so the recommendation from the highway superintendent uh, corroborated by the town engineer and also the police chief were, and myself earlier today was put a stop sign there because we do have kids walking and riding their bikes as they enter the walk zone to the schools. Uh, the other is uh, a stop sign at King Street and Gerald Lane, which is closer to Springville. But that King Street run is um, really a strip that people can pick up some speed on, particularly if you're number one, running late to school. Uh, and number two, Waze has figured out that that is a place with no stop signs. So as East End Trade Parade heads east and people are looking at ways to go this ways go, they're looking for ways on ways. Uh, it's sending them down King Street because that's a thoroughfare you can move quickly down. So what it's doing is pulling bypass traffic into the community. The same is true on Wakeman and Gardenia because of people taking Dune Road and coming over the bridge to circumvent. So we supported both of those things. I imagine the next step would be that they put a stop sign up there. Uh, also had the opportunity to comment on the zoning changes that would include non-medical cannabis dispensaries. That, it, that hearing is going on right now, so I was able to jump in at the beginning of public comment um, and caution the, board, the town board that it, as Southampton Town in New York State moves into non-medical cannabis use, and the, the retail sale of that, it's okay to walk before we run. So restrictive zoning and then um, a commitment to the revenue that comes back to the community as a result of this retail, uh, portions of it be earmarked for awareness and education for youth um, regarding substance use and substance abuse. And so uh, we shared those comments. I'll follow up this week on the written record as well and send uh, a written record and have a copy available for you all as well. Uh, we have two major capital improvements pending this year, the high school bathrooms in the 1997 wing. That's the back hallway. We have some uh, under, under the surface uh, drains to fix and replace. We need a dedicated stretch of time to do that. Currently, those bathrooms are offline, but teachers and, and staff are, are managing by using the other bathrooms. Um, and it's not been a terrible inconvenience to, to disruptive class time. The high school auditorium, we got through a great weekend of Mamma Mia, you can see on the bottom right there. Um, and now we have the Tri-M Music Honor Society induction on Thursday. And then that auditorium kind of goes dark for uh, until we get into the spring symposium, concerts, commencement activities, whatnot. So this is a quick window for us who replace the original chiller. There's no air conditioning in that space right now. It is original 1997-98. And before it starts to warm up in there, we have some HVAC work to do. And we have the reserve to do that. That work is, on, is, is scheduled and, and will be underway so that when we have our culminating events this spring, we'll become, the community will be comfortable in there. Springtime events, again, congratulations to the cast and crew of Mamma Mia and the audience who was up in the aisles dancing and singing along to ABBA. It was a great weekend and uh, Mrs. Perez and, the, and the, the team, along with our kids, just did a remarkable job. Uh, this weekend, if uh, invite anybody who's watching at home to Bye Bye Birdie at Hampton Bay's Middle School. That will be Friday and Saturday. We have our St. Patrick's Day Parade on Saturday as well. So our bands will be represented um, and our kids certainly will be too, um, hopefully to bring home a trophy. The SUNY College Tour is back and we'll leave Monday morning uh, with our junior class. That's to Albany, Oneonta, Cortland, and Binghamton. Overnight trip, quick, they eat. Official college tours at each of those campuses and, and food in the dining halls. So a real, real on the ground explosion. I uh, want to spend a little time talking about uh, some 2023 capital improvements. You're going to vote tonight on recommendations to award bids to the lowest responsible bidder. 
Building permits have been approved by the New York State Education Department. A lot of this work has been a long time in planning. So you almost forget, like, oh yeah, we wanted to do that because it takes 18 months to two years to get something from paper to shovel, and we're ready for shovel. Uh, these, um, these projects are funded from this year's general fund and COVID grant money. So it is not a tax increase. Uh, there's no bond associated with this. There's no long-term debt associated with these projects and an opportunity, thanks to Larry's stewardship of the grants and, and, the, and the budget over the last few years with foundation aid increases, to get some of these big ticket items done, these one-time expenses that we need to, to address. So that includes at the high school, air conditioning and aid classrooms, a renovation of the library courtyard, which we just cannot put lipstick on that pig anymore. You know, it, it is 1971 and it is time to make it much more useful, effective space for our students and for staff. Spot repair and resurfacing of the track that was last done in 2008 um, and our architects and engineers who came out to survey the, pro to survey the track uh, marveled at how, um, how long it lasted. So districts would typically have done this sooner, but ours really held up and so there's just a few spot repairs and resurfacing that needs to be done to keep that space great. Synthetic infield surfaces on the varsity baseball and softball fields as well. At the elementary school, air conditioning in eight classes, the creation of an outdoor classroom and learning space, and then a toilet room in the life skills special ed classroom. Currently, all ki kindergarten and first grade classrooms have in-classroom toilet rooms, and life, our life skills academy um, is, we're out of rooms that have toilet rooms, and so this uh, is uh, a, ne a necessity uh, for kids um, in the developmental program uh, where there's pr appropriate and proper support. So we'll take a classroom that's big and just carve out a space for a toilet room um, to be used this summer. A couple of graphics. Now keep in mind these are renderings. These are not exactly what it will look like as the shovels get into the ground, but this is an aerial view of the elementary school. To the left would be the tennis courts. To the right would be the gymnasium. And to the top, the, no the west, would be the playground. So you see a pathway that connects the um, tennis courts, the shrubs and the screening uh, is a privacy and safety measure, and then that brown building, that brown square, um, is a cla an outdoor classroom space that looks like that. Um, colors to be decided, uh, neutral, natural, nature-based colors, likely a, a tan or a sandstone on the beams, and then uh, a, a green on the top that kind of blends in with the trees and, and shrubs around it. Um, that outdoor class, that outdoor space is about 800 square feet, so roughly what a classroom size is. So you can bring an entire class out, two classes to sit, sit around and do something outside. Okay, it's, it's exciting. That's exciting. The library courtyard, to orient yourself, up at the top is the library. To the left would be um, like the hallway with the main office and room one. To the right would be the um, hallway, the middle hallway, like rooms 13 to 20. And this is a total rip and replace of um, that space. And you can see that there are bistro style tables and chairs there, a seating wall, um, some shading and some screening so that you can be outside and not just in the direct sun. And then some low tables and chairs so classes can go out there and work collaboratively, work independently. If you're in a stud hall in the library, you can go out on a nice day. So. Uh, excited to, to redo and rethink this and start using this space again. The public hearing tonight uh, handles two recommendations. Um, and one is, the first one is to amend the income eligibility for property tax relief. This is a partial exemption for senior citizens. Current income eligibility limits that say for certain low income senior citizens, you have to be over 65 and make a maximum amount of money. If you make underneath that, there is an exemption from your property taxes of up to 50%, somewhere from 5% to 50%. The last time that income limit of $29,000 was set was 2009. So Governor Hochul in June signed an allowance for local municipalities like towns and counties and school districts to update that uh, to $50,000 um, to, to be re more reflective of costs in 2023. 
Suffolk County passed their allowance in December. Southampton Town passed it in February, so we're third in line to do that. That's what tonight's public hearing will be about. Can you uh, yep. Define partial. Yes. Okay. So if you look at the chart at the bottom of this slide, if you make up to fifty thousand dollars, your fifty per fifty percent of your valuation is taken off. So if your house is worth six hundred thousand dollars, you'll be taxed on three hundred thousand dollars of it. If you make fifty six thousand nine hundred dollars, ten percent, you'll get a ten percent exemption from your property taxes. It's important to note that with all property tax exemption discussions, when that money comes off, it just doesn't go anywhere. It goes, it is redistributed across the taxpayers in that taxing jurisdiction. So um, this is limited in scope. There are only 85 um, exemptions for senior, for low income senior citizens. So the scope of this change is minimal. Um, in its in its impact across the town, the second. Uh, so, what are, what is the school district's um, thoughts on considering the change? Considering t amending it, so the the recommendation would be to be in line with Suffolk County and South and Southampton Town, so that when an individual who qualifies for this, the 85 taxpayers who qualify for this, um, that there would be a consistency in their property tax bill from their county, town, and school district taxes. Because it's minimal in scope, we feel strong, we feel more confident in making that, in that recommendation because the redistribution is minimal. And so this is something that's been on the books, it's just that they're raising the limit due to cost of living inflation, whatever. Yeah, so the question was, this was on the books? Yes. Up to the, you can see the 2009 limits are there uh, on the right-hand column. So those were 27000 to $35,000. This is a 2009 to 2023 update. Similarly, um, there, the re there is a second resolution for a partial exemption for disabled individuals with limited income. So if you qualify for a disability that, um, who is limited by reason of such disability in your ability to earn income, um, you would qualify for um, a property tax exemption along the same sliding scale. If you make up to $50,000, you get it would be 50% exemption. If you make $57,000, it would be a 10% exemption. This is a much more limited group of individuals in Hampton Bay, it's only 17. So that's roughly 20% of the individuals who qualify for this Southampton town wide. So again, limited in scope. And um, the recommendation to your question, Dot, uh, previously is that we would we would be consistent with town and county and that we would update what's already on the books from 2009 to 2023. So that'll be the public hearing if there and if anyone is to speak on that tonight. So we'll, after when, this when we can one? what's that? When's that one? Now. Oh. So after yeah. after reports you'll open the public hearing and then oh, hear well, anybody who wants to speak on us. Yep. Our public hearing. Yeah. The town did theirs in February. Right. So I thought. Yeah. Okay. Budget planning underway. Um, this slide is a, is a um, retread from last month. Uh, our goals remain, our four guiding principles remain the same. Sustain our viable programs, stay under the tax cap, do not live day to day off our savings account, so don't use reserves, and retain the staff to run the programs that are viable. Our goals continue to be diverse and rigorous, exciting program offerings for students mitigating the tax rate for the local taxpayer and intending to the house. So this summer's capital projects are a good example of that. Taking little bites along the way so that we don't get to a point and say we have to do a massive, massive thing across the district because, thing, because facilities have deteriorated. Our team has done a really great job keeping up on those. At, as it stands right now, and Larry will be the first to tell you that the budget is a minute-by-minute minute evolution through the day. I was in his office like six or seven times today, add this, subtract that, move this, and you know, he's smile. I hope he's smiling. I can't see the back of his head, but uh, right now the budget stands at a 7.9% spending increase 
why is that a larger increase than the tax levy increase, which right now stands at 1.5%? Because we had a very considerable increase in state aid. So I talked about this last month. The governor and the legislature are, are fulfilling the third year of their three-year commitment to fully fund foundation aid. Hampton Bays was fourth from the bottom in the amount of recovery in foundation aid that we needed. So we took big bites of where we got more state aid. What has that allowed us to do? Some, some capital improvements, some academic and instructional improvements, and the last two years we were able to freeze the tax levy. So we were, did, as a board, your budget proposal did not increase the tax levy. So right now, as we go up and down day to day, line by line, how much does this textbook cost? How much are these pencils going to cost? Where are our contracts settling? Right now we're at about 1.5. We have an allowable tax levy limit of 2.8. So this 1.5 number is comfortably and uh, with, with room underneath our tax levy cap. Local revenue, um, we budget that conservatively. So that's, that's estimated at about $475,000. That ebbs and flows with rebates and boces of services we don't end up using increased interest on accounts and, and reserve accounts and um, then our state aid you can see the big increase there don't lick your chops for this to be every year so the foundation aid increase that the conversation in albany last week when we met with this with the governor's office and the the education department was that this foundation aid was year three of a three-year catch-up everybody who is already caught up on foundation aid received roughly a 3% state aid increase. So what does that mean for us? This good times are rolling is going to stop next year potentially unless the state re looks at and re-engineers the foundation aid formula. So we went from three big years of catch up to then small back to what we should expect to be small increments. What does that mean? We have to be really mindful and conservative about our recurring expenses and what we want to sustain so that it can be sustained. So the budget as it stands right now would increase just under 8% from 59.5 million to 64.3 million or so. What does that include? It includes our continued work on e-archiving and records retention. So that's something we've leaned into on an enduring institution infrastructure piece. COVID-19 cost line is decreasing now. We can start to back off um, on the amount of money we needed to reserve for that as the pandemic is coming to a full close. We will propose this spring a shift from uh, to Parent Square from School Messenger. So, Ms. Solhane, I know you use Parent Square in East Quag. Love it. Miss, you love Great. it. Okay. Love so, it. so that's I, I hear that from Mrs. Clemenson as well. So that's the two that's two ringing endorsements. It's a consistent, effective way. It's app driven. Um, it replaces School Messenger. It can it replaces uh, Remind. It replaces those. You know, it, it eliminates any need for texting, which we really don't endorse. Um, and it is controlled to communicate, teachers can communicate with their class, buildings can communicate with the, their student body, district can communicate with the entire student enrollment very quickly. Um, it's, is there anything you want to say to it? Yeah. Um, as a teacher, I love posting just um, updated events and photographs. You can upload a bunch of photographs at a time, not just one, your text message or your post to the class or the families is not limited to 50 characters. You can take a photograph of homework sheet and send it home. It's so user friendly. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So there's an onboarding process Mr. Ferrar is going to take us through so that it's not dropped on anybody. We'll look to that onboarding process takes about two months. Probably so we would look for training and onboarding into the spring and summer and then a release and this is our new way of living come September. Save us any money? No, it is uh no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> time and effort. Time and effort. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Communication, which is <laughs> it's an invest so currently um, it's about a $7,000 increase to what we're spending with School Messenger right now. Right. Remind is free, 
but inconsistent in its usage. You can only, it, it, and it's, Sorry. it's Parent Square is an investment to in, increasing, improving, making more efficient the communication homeschool connection. Uh, very, if this is a live streaming type feed that parents can get, we can communicate about open the portal and check your child's report card or look what, <laughs> look at the project we did or we're having fun at field day and really in, and bringing parents into in, in a way that has been limited. Has been limited. School safety, um, a focus on school safety includes increased camera presence via additional installed cameras across the campuses and enhanced connection to the Southampton PD dispatch. Um, so we still have some work, both the PD and, the, and us, to make sure that connectivity stays fresh and stays active and, and how we train so that if there's a 911 call, um, the PD can tap into our cameras and see what we're seeing as they're approaching, if there ever was an emergency situation. And then enhanced one button lockdown capability. So uh, this is, um, this is a, um, another evolution, an example of Alyssa's Law that we talked about in June, where districts post Parkland um, are encouraged to have one button lockdown solutions, which we do. This is just another element of that. So if you were to pull up to Hampton Bay School while we were in a lockdown situation, there would be very bright blue strobes flashing, indicating you need to leave right now. If you have a classroom, if you have a class out in the field, on the field, and they see the strobes start to flash, that's an instruction to move away from the building. Something's happening here. So the next step of that technology would be that when those lights go on, it automatically dispatches to the police department. Right now, that's a standalone solution. So you'd have to hit the switch and hit the one, you know, hit two things. This would integrate it a little bit more. Facilities-wise, we are experiencing utility cost increase of about 7%. Maintenance staff increases to maintain the facilities and maintain the improvements that we're making. Uh, district office, um, need some work, uh, basement archiving uh, has been, the basement has become like all of our own basements at home. I'll just put it down in the basement, right? And so archiving and making sure that we are um, e-archiving the, the things that are required for lifetime um, retention are done so appropriately. At the, at the elementary school, the 1927 wing, that's grade four, uh, has ductwork repairs in the HVAC system. In the middle school, we need to put some money into floor repairs. So you'll start to see, you, you might see patches where we've had to patch. Um, so need floor repairs. The building is now uh, approaching 15 years old. So those things are going to start to happen now. It doesn't seem like it's 15 years old, but uh, those things happen in your own home too at 15 years. Um, and then in the high school, the back gym floor needs to be redone, and then the flue piping uh, in the boiler room needs to be reconfigured as well. The gym floor hadn't been done because of COVID. We didn't use that gym for anything beyond lunch and storage when we were decreasing the density, so we weren't going to redo the floor, but we had stuff on it. And now, now that gym's back to fully functioning gym use. Instructional services. Uh, there are a number of teachers who lived in our COVID grants, um, four, four teachers in particular, who live in our COVID grants and are funded by that. Those COVID grants are going to expire. And the recommendation that I'm making to you is that these, have, these individuals have become integral to our intervention programs, particularly working in small groups with kids, both enriching and, re and remediating. Uh, they lived in our COVID grants because we were taking a conservative approach to these foundation aid increases. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the commitment that New York State was making for three years was fulfilled. Now that it is, and we had some one-time expenses in there that we were able to do and not worry about recurring, we're able to, we're able to be confident that they can live there now that that funding is there. Um, at the, that includes three, uh, one math and two reading interventionists at the elementary school, and one math and reading interventionist who complements somebody who is already on, uh, in the general fund for grade five and six. At the high school, there's no additional staff, uh, but there are additional teaching assignments be beyond traditional contractual loads. Uh, that allows us to uh, teach electives, 
provide electives to kids and more offerings to kids. We are adding a, a leadership class for students uh, where kids can learn public speaking, problem solving, co conflict management, leading in 2023. Um, those things show up elsewhere in our curriculum, but this would be a dedicated leadership class that we're going to uh, take a bite at. This year was our first, and, and we intend to continue our financial literacy initiative with a personal finance class at the high school that aligns to the, the, the creation of the student bank. And then, again, the grade 11 benchmark to Washington, D.C. That considerable investment of 50% of that cost really makes it a viable class trip, given the economic status of, of many families in our community. In adult education, we'll continue the in-kind support for grant-funded uh, Hospitality Academy, which is currently running this month, and then the Adult Ed Program for Fall and Spring. That's the lifelong learning, the commitment to community um, that's important to a lot of our residents who don't necessarily engage with Hampton Bay Schools other than to come in at night and take a class. How many, um, how many in the um, hospitality? hospitality? Uh, we've been averaging between 40 and 50 in attendance at the first four academies. Okay. Canceled tonight due to weather. Uh, but it'll pick back up again on Thursday. The addition to the budget um, that is included in the number that I share with you are two special education teachers to serve incoming and existing caseloads at Hampton Bays Elementary School. Um, Mr. Pagano has worked with the CSE um, and the leadership team at the, middle, at the elementary school to make sure that kids' needs are met um, at that early intervention age to address any gaps and, and developmental needs so that um, as the kids get older, all their needs have been met. Are these existing teachers or are these going to be new hires? The bottom two? Yes. Those are two new hires. Two new ones. The yeah. other ones are the existing. They're ones existing. For the, from the COVID grants. Yep. Okay. So the net add of two humans who we don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And that will be posted on? Oh, oh us. Okay. Yep. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, transportation benefits, um, ERS and TRS, are in, they're anticipated to decrease a smidge by about 1.6%. Health insurance costs increase, totally eat that up and surpass that. So 15% health insurance cost increases. So that's those sustainability matters that we have to look at long term because those are big costs. Transportation is an anticipated 5% increase due to CPI contract increases, but fuel and increased usage as well. We're in the middle of our contract with Montauk Bus, so uh, that, that's an active contract for another three, two years, Larry? Mm -hmm. no, two, two, yeah. 2025. 2025. And then capital expenses, again, an opportunity to have one-time capital expenses. Uh, a lot of window replacement and cow wall, that translucent replacement at the elementary school, a couple of spots at the middle school as well. It fades, it loses its, it, its opaqueness and, and um, opportunity to, to get that done as well. Um, also kindergarten and grade one bathrooms, there are 14 of them um, that are original and some of the, they need they need a rehab. The tile work, the, the, the those toilet rooms need um, a lot of little boys and girls using that over the last uh, 60 years and <laughs> so some updates need to be done there as well um, I shared this um, and I just included for your file again uh, that the, the real story of this budget is that we're maintaining progress uh, through that we've in, made in, in investments that we've made both in facility and people in kids uh, while the local share of the property taxpayer to fund schools has decreased over time. So the darkest purple line you can see is smaller in 2023 than it was in 2010. And our average tax levy increases have been right about the 2% range as well. On May 16th, there'll be two propositions before the community to authorize the school budget for the next year and to authorize the use of the up to 300 in undesignated, unspent money from this year for basic renovations. There's one seat up on the Board of Education as well. We anticipate on April 19th to present to you a full final budget proposal for uh, your approval. That would then be the budget proposal that goes to the budget hearing in May and then to the full community on May 16th. Uh, and you can see the timeline here, which is post, which will be posted on our calendar as well for individuals wanting information about when they need to register, when they need to get their ballot if it's absentee, and when and where to vote. 
Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you for your questions in the middle here. We'll do Larry's presentation and then can do the public hearing. Okay. I, I just have a, a very one topic to bring your to your attention. Um, I'm sure the members of the board heard about uh, the bank issues over the last couple of days. Uh, Signature Bank was not one of our banks directly. It is one of our banks indirectly. Uh, we do business with Brown and Brown. They handle our flexible benefits plan or our flexible benefits insurance plan. They invest those monies in Signature Bank. Our total investment is less than $250,000. We are covered by FDIC. There is no threat of, of loss of any funds of any kind. Um, but, you know, Signature was uh, taken over by uh, the Federal Deposit uh, Insurance Comp Corporation. They're going to uh, ensure that the bank is stays liquid and, and everybody gets the money that they have in there. So it's not a threat to us, but it, it was something that, that definitely occurred and we want to make you aware of. Um, all of our assets as a school district are what's called collateralized. So 102% of any monies we have in banks has to be backed by treasury bills and like assets. We're say perfect. We're as tight as you can get when it goes to that. And we have to. That's required by law. So don't, don't when it comes to worrying about banking, don't worry about school assets and banking. We're about as good as it can, as it can be. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Larry. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Larry. Oh, okay. Well, we will now do public hearing. Got my glasses to Okay, notice is hereby given that the Board of Education of the Hampton Bays Union Free School District will hold a public hearing on March 14, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Hampton Bays High School, 88 Oregon Road East, Hampton Bays, New York, 11946. Said hearing is be being held to hear all interested parties and residents regarding a proposed resolution to authorize an increase in exemption for school property taxes for qualified low-income senior citizens and persons with disabilities pursuant to sections 467 and 459C of the Real Property Tax Law. Uh, if there are no questions, which I think we've pretty much covered, uh, I need a motion or actually do a vote. We'll motion. just open the motion. Yeah. Okay. So we'll open that and then I'm going to, we're going to go right down the line. Start with Doc. <laughs> I, well, we just I need a motion to open the hearing. Oh, here. oh, so I can close it. Okay. So we need a motion to open the hearing. Motion. motion. I need a second. Second. Okay. And if we have no comments, which we've already taken in, then we can close the hearing. And I need a motion to close the hearing. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. The motion passes. All right. Uh, business and finance, we will do a, unless there's any questions or concerns, we will do a consent agenda from 4A to 4G. Uh, I think that's where we went over there. Was about transfers. Uh, I need a motion. Motion. I need a second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, student services is on its own. I need a motion. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Personnel, consent agenda from 6A to 6K, unless we have any questions or concerns, I will need a motion. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, consent agenda, again, with any questions or concerns, consent from 7A to 7B. Um, I think everybody did. Anybody get the email on the nomination for the BOCES? Yes. yes, everybody saw that? Okay. All right. Uh, then I need a motion, please. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Public comment. 
persons may address the Board of Education on any matters of interest or concern. The Board President will recognize all speakers. Time limits may be imposed based upon agenda needs. I think we're, we're okay here, right? Nobody online, so. All right, with that, I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. I need a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Meeting is adjourned. Get home safely. Don't know what it's doing out there, but probably not good. Probably messy. A little messy.